Thank you for staying with us. Uh, we have just concluded conversations about um, the evacuation of Nigerian students and Nigerian nationals from uh, uh, Sudan, where there currently has been fighting ongoing for several weeks. Now, moving on to our next story, where the discovery of mass graves in uh, Shakahola Forest near the coastal town of Malindi has shocked Kenyans uh, with cult leader Paul Mackenzie Nthenge accused of driving his followers to death by preaching that um, starvation was the only path to meet God. Now, Kenya's interior minister says that the government of Kenya will do whatever it takes to make sure that the convict, Mr. Mackenzie, is convicted as, uh, is convicted as the death toll from this particular uh, you know, suspected Kenyan starvation cult is now rising up to as high as 90 people, including many children. And the search for more bodies has been paused because uh, the morgues are full, according to reports from the police. Now, in this next report, uh, New Central's Blessings Musugu, who is sitting next to me here, uh, helps us understand the situation of things in Kenya at the moment. Officials had earlier reported seven deaths in eastern Kenya in connection with the arrest of Mackenzie Nthenge, a pastor who reportedly told followers to starve themselves in order to meet Jesus. He was initially released on bail of 100,000 Kenyan shillings. However, police arrested Nthenge on April 15 after discovering the bodies of four followers. By yesterday, for seven people and been confirmed dead. However, today, again, additional 11. Therefore, that makes a number of uh, 40, uh, uh, 58 people confirmed dead. Um, and this is out of um, bodies exhumed and those who died on the way to the hospital. As a um, national police service, we strongly condemn any form of religious organization that promotes extremist beliefs and operates outside the confines of the law. It is believed that some of his devotees could still be hiding in the bush around Shakahola, which was raided by police earlier this month after a teapot from a local non-profit group. Since then, a number of people have been rescued and dozens of bodies unearthed in mass graves dug in shallow pits. Another senior police official also confirmed the death toll, saying some of the bodies were just in the forest and had not even been buried. The penal code might not be sufficient, uh, but we will look at and see, depending on what kind of evidence we get, uh, to be able to, to, to allow us to um, prefer um, charges that are uh, commensurate to the crime that has just occurred here, which is uh, horrible. There are fears that some members could be hiding from authorities in surrounding bushland and at risk of death if not quickly found. The Kenya Red Cross said 212 persons had been reported missing from its support staff at Malindi, out of which two were reunited with their families. The case has prompted the government to flag the need for tighter control of fringe denominations in a country with a history of self-declared pastors and movements that become involved in crime. Nthenga's case is due to be heard in court on the 2nd of May. Blessings Musugu, reporting for News Central. Well, this is quite a very, very sad, sad, sad indeed story. Uh, hearing of the number, the death toll now rising to 90. Well, and I mean, Bernard, I'm sorry, just to just to give in some context, right? Mm. Some of the things that were not embedded in that report because mm. of time. Now, one of the, you know, unconfirmed uh, reports that is going around on social media now says a very young and successful aviation worker, a lady, actually donated that land to um, Mackenzie. And then Mackenzie, on the other hand, told these people, he has started this since 2003, I think. Mm. And then he was arrested in 2019 when two children died out of starvation because of this same issue. But the baffling thing is at that time he was released, probably because there was no so much evidence against him. And then after he was released, he still carried on with this very bizarre practice. Mm. And he told people he offered his farmland for the fasting, right? They usually fast, I think, I don't know the duration, but he told them not to mix with the people of the earth 
So they come to his farmland and they fast there. And it, it's not just the people in that region, in neighboring region as well, because one of the people in that report that, wasn't, that I wasn't able to include, uh, 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 one of the relatives of the woman that traveled there said she just woke up one morning and said she was going somewhere. She didn't tell them where she was going. She just took a flight and that was the last they heard of her. They're still yet to find her, so they don't even know if she's if one of the was, survivors. Yeah. And then another woman that was rescued refused to eat. She closed her mouth and said they should kill her instead. That's how deep this brainwashing has gone. So mm. it's, it's really devastating to see these kind of stories. It, it is devastating indeed. And we're not going to discuss this alone. We also have our own in-house correspondents, Ni Yomoni and Bettina Uweli, joining us to discuss this very, very disturbing, um, you know, turn of events uh, deep we're, we're all the way in Kenya. Um, Ni, Bettina, we clearly know that this is not the first we've heard about um, religious cults, religious beliefs, um, would I say religious brainwashing of people mm -hmm. um, leading to deaths of so many people. Um, what's your, you know, what's your view on this issue so far? Uh, Bettina, let's start with you. Okay, well, like uh, Blessings said, thank you for having me, Bernard, and Blessings. But like Blessings said, uh, said the last thing she said, the brainwashing, it's, it's, uh, it's something that I'm trying to wrap my head around, you know? That someone will camp you in a particular place, alienate you from your family, from your friends. And as far as I'm concerned, it's, once alienation comes into the picture, it's something you should be worried about. Because people who tend to, you know, be toxic and they want to prey on your innocence, they first alienate you from people that have common sense mm. before they can now, you know, prey on you to do whatever it is they want to do to you. And then people need to really be wise because how is a so-called prophet or man of God telling you not to eat, telling you to fast, but you're not seeing him doing the same? That should raise eyebrows amongst the community. And how do you even leave, especially the family members who um, have missed their family members for a while owing to this situation, and then they are camping them in a particular ground, and nobody is trying to get their family members back, even before all of this situation. And then to the government as well, saying that this is not the first time. How come after he was released back then in the year, he was not monitored? Right. Because yeah. this, is a, this is a serious offense, and it's, it's quite grave. Definitely. The it death is, of a child or the death of people, is, it's quite serious. It's not something that they should just look at and say, oh, we don't really have facts. Yes, you don't have facts. You didn't, you didn't have facts at the time. But I would have expected that the authorities will put some kind of watch on this kind of person. Mm, definitely. Ni, ni, with, with these kind of issues going on, and we're seeing you know, so many cases like springing up in different countries in Africa. I mean, it's happening across the globe, um, but we're seeing a lot of cases like this in Africa where religion is... Uh, very, very key. What kind of message does this send out concerning our religious practices in this part of the world? I'll quickly want to define what cult is. So I agree mm. with the news bar that's on the screen that says cult. And cult means a system of religious devotion directed towards a particular figure or object. Mm. Meanwhile, the church means a local group of people who follow the same Christian religious belief, local or general. And mm. I, I, what I've come to notice in this particular instance is that the, what the socioeconomic is. Um, people are going through in Kenya has been weaponized by this particular person. Mm, very so true. it's not really a, a matter of um, them tilting their failed faith in this belief. They have uh, have seen that okay, this is this is there's this prosperity theory, um, prosperity theology that has now been preached. Um, it has made them believe that okay, this is the way out of the basic amenities that should be provided by the government. And as Bettina said earlier, this is not the first time this has been going on. And Let's even pick this from the holy book where the Christians are even saying, let's it's talk fasting that they are referring to. I, I tried to dig up, uh, I think it's Isaiah 50, 58 or something that was speaking about the fasting. When I read about it, fasting is about uh, um, release from oppression, uh, release from um, dominating uh, powers, freedom, feeding the hungry. But in this case, it's starvation. So it's the direct opposite, and it's, it's surprising. I mean, so, I, um, Ni, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. So the funny thing is, these people actually know that they are starving because from what he said to them, uh, it was a case of when you starve yourself for Jesus, then you get to see him. So it wasn't exactly, they understood that it wasn't the normal, usual fasting process. Every religion fasts. And the truth is, every religion has its own set of extremists. And that's why you see people that uh, when they get to the point of killing others or you're doing some very bizarre things in the name of religion, then you know that brainwashing has set in. Because what on earth 
could a person tell you to make you think that starving, even if you're, even if you don't consider yourself, I just try to picture the mothers there, watch their children die of starvation and still did the same to themselves in the name of trying to see their God, trying to see Jesus. It's just really, and, and it, it's so deep to the point that even after they get rescued, they still refuse to eat. And just like Bettina said, this person is asking you, you all to do this. He's the one digging the graves and burying them, but he's not dying. And nobody is asking, why are you still alive? Why haven't you gone to see so, Jesus? So, so now, mm -hmm. here lies the question, um, ladies and gentlemen, or gentlemen in this case, um, is this where we now call for some kind of control or restriction or constraint to religion as it were? Or should we continue to allow religion and religious practices thrive as they should? Ni. Nee. So the, the very first thing is, um, how are these religious body registered? As NGOs, um, the truth is uh, some of them don't get to pay uh, the dues that every other um, institution that has been created in the country gets to pay. So there's yeah. a wave. There's a waiver on um, so many things they would have done on a normal day. And I remember in Kenya, there was a call for these, uh, for stricter measures on churches, but it didn't really see the light of day. As mm. of last year, when things like this also started happening, and they, 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 they were also uh, calls that religious bodies should come together and start having a regulation whereby they can checkmate other religious institutions and religious members. But that didn't work as well because they all had their own interests. Um, people who were benefiting from either um, corrupt practices, corrupt money, um, um, ritual, ritual, uh, ritual, ritualism, <laughs> Who were, who were benefiting from all those stuff wouldn't want their wouldn't want uh, them digging into their their, their 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 private issues and these are some of the things that have not made this turn so I think we need to in some of these countries especially African countries they need to start making these churches accountable and it's not just in terms of killing even uh, there has been complaint about noise pollution that comes from the churches that is true. I was going to raise that speaker, I was going to raise outside that too. Africa in most part of the places outside Africa, you don't just see churches erect speakers outside. Mm. The noise is too much. And there are so many other things like that. But because there's, it's a religious body, mm. there's always this sentiment about, oh, that we need to differentiate faith from the law. Even the Bible says you must obey the law of the law. Definitely. Land. So it we, just needs uh, uh, to, we need to find a place where there's compromise. Most where definitely. Whatever action you're taking as against, the, 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 the government has a right to protect the people, even mm. from itself. And that I is very, very important. I agree with you. I'm noted. sorry, Lee, we'll so have to, we'll the have lives to. of people are in danger as a result of their faith, which uh, a particular set of people or a particular belief system is put in there, then it should be tackled. Well, I mean, Nee, thank you so much for that. Regulating uh, religious activities is another discussion for another day because we see how even the religious people themselves antagonize that. But thank you so much, Nee, for that. And um, right now, because of our time, we will not be able to take much of this. But it really is devastating to see that over 90 people have died because of this bizarre practice. Thank you so much, Bettina and Nee, for joining thank us. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us.